Hello, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be creating my dream cloak inspired by the elves of Middle-earth. I designed this cloak in my Q&A video, click on the i or the link in the description if you want to watch that first. I have had this navy blue linen fabric for quite a few months now because I am the queen of procrastination. I just went out and bought a purple cabbage, and this is not as random as you might think. I don't just want this cloak to look elvish, I want it to feel like if elvish culture was actually a part of real history. So I'm going to be creating this cloak with 100% natural fibers, however I do not have a navy blue natural fiber thread that will match this fabric. So I have this natural colored linen thread and I'm going to use this purple cabbage to dye it blue. This thread doesn't actually have any fiber content written on it, but I did the burn test on it. It burns like linen, it looks like linen, it feels like linen, so I think it's safe to assume that it's linen. So I'm gonna take this purple cabbage into the kitchen and we'll start dyeing. Not dyeing, but dyeing. To create this dye bath, I chopped up the purple cabbage and put it into a pot with plenty of water to cover it. Then I added a small handful of salt because I read that that could be used to help the dye stick to the fabric better without needing to do a separate bath on the fabric first. It turns out that when dyeing fabric with purple cabbage, you actually do need to mordant it first with a totally separate bath. I didn't know that at the time though. While the dye bath for my thread is simmering, I'm going to start cutting out the pieces of the fabric. This fabric is looking incredibly gray on camera, but it is bluer in real life. So the measurements of this fabric as it is are actually pretty much already perfect, I just need to cut out the piece for the hood. To make the pattern for a hood, you basically just need to double up the fabric and draw the side profile of how you want your hood to look. And of course, add seam allowance. Okay, so... Yesterday, I tried to dye the thread, and I tried using the cabbage. I boiled it for like an hour, and then I put the thread in there after I prepared it, and then I let that simmer for like another two hours or something, and then I took it out, and it all washed out. Literally nothing happened. So then I tried using this weird blue powder stuff. It's... It comes from like an algae or something, it's the same stuff that makes spirulina blue. However, that stuff I discovered is not water soluble, so it didn't actually dye the thread either. So at this point I decided to resort to food coloring, so I used basically an entire bottle of blue food coloring with a couple other drops of other food colorings to dull it down a little bit. I left the thread in basically pure food coloring overnight and I washed it out today and... It's gray. So apparently navy blue thread is just not gonna happen for me. Side note, I would like to try dyeing fabric blue with purple cabbage again in the future because now I know the things that I did wrong, which I won't talk about right now, but you may see that in a future video. This is still quite a beautiful thread actually, like it's a really nice shade of gray, but it is definitely not the right color for this fabric. So what I've done is taken a strip of the extra fabric and started pulling threads out of it, and I'm going to use these to sew with. So that was like an entire day's detour, literally just trying to dye some threads so that I can start this project, and we still have yet to really do anything aside from cut the pieces out. So I don't think I'm going to be doing anything on the cloak today. Today is my birthday, and I kind of just want to chill. So tomorrow we'll start gathering and hemming all the pieces, putting them together, and we can start really seeing how the cloak is going to take shape. So I will see you tomorrow. All right, let's actually make this cloak now. So this super huge piece of the cloak, I'm pretty sure this is like four yards of fabric. So basically the entire four yard length of this is going to be pleated into the hood. However, before we do that, I'm going to be doing the hemming situation, which let me explain how this is going to work. This isn't just going to be the regular little fold it over twice and sew it hem. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to take like six inches from the edge and fold that over and then do some tiny little stitches to tack it down in a few spots. That way the fabric is sort of folded in on itself to make a lining on the edge of the cloak, all the way down the front opening and all along the hem. There's a few reasons that I'm doing this. First of all, for all the way around the hem, I'm going to be embroidering little stars if you've seen my design. If this was just one layer and I was embroidering through it, then you would see all of the ugly back embroidery stuff and I don't want that. So if there's two layers where the embroidery is going to be or a sort of lining, I can only sew through the top layer so that you see the pretty side of the embroidery, but the back ugly side is covered by another layer of fabric, if that makes any sense. So that was kind of the first big reason that I decided to do that, but then also I realized, hey, this way 
I can add pockets. So imagine there's the little edge lining the two layers along the front opening of the cloak. This way I can put pockets on the inside of the cloak and also only be catching one layer of the fabric so you don't see it from the outside. I can make a couple pockets on each side around the level where my hands are so that I can actually stick my hands into the pockets of the cloak. So I'm gonna get started doing the little tiny edge hem the way you would regularly hem something so that I can then do the tacking of the edge lining situation. It is the next day, and yesterday I got most of what I said I was going to get done on the cloak. Usually I would work faster than I did yesterday, except this thread is not particularly functional. This is of course because it was not intended to be thread, it's like the threads that build up the fabric that I pulled out. So I have to like triple this up to make it strong enough to use, and it's still rather delicate. So I basically have to like have multiple strands of it and do like a bunch of extra stitches and it really, it's not great. But it is still currently all I have. So I'm just gonna have to deal with it. I finished the sort of hem and edge lining on the front opening of the cloak, but I have not completely finished the bottom. I have it all pinned where I want to tack it down. I am going to go to the thrift store quickly to see if I can find any natural fiber navy blue thread because it would just make my life so much easier. It was at this point that I realized that I actually had an embroidery thread that was exactly the perfect color, so I decided to split that into thinner strands and use that as thread instead. It is yet another day and I finished all of the edging of the cloak yesterday. Because I just tacked the hem down in a few places every four inches or so, it makes it totally invisible to the outside, which is exactly what I was looking for. Yesterday I also sewed together the hood, so I sewed the seam in the back, and then I did the felling here on the inside. So the next thing I'm going to do is pleat the cape section of the cloak into the hood. I'll sew them together and then fell it, and then pretty much the structure of the cloak will be done. I also sewed these two little patches, they're just rectangles of fabric that I hemmed, and then I'm going to whip stitch them to the inside front of the cloak so that I can have a little pockets to stick my hands in. And then I do have a little hook and eye thing that I made that I'm going to sew into the front so that it can close. So I'm going to get to pleating the cloak and sewing the hood onto it, then attaching the pockets, and then I'll get back to you. wearing the cloak as you can see. I'm digging the pockets and the hood and everything but I'm not going to show you the whole thing yet because we're going to save that for the reveal. Currently I just have it closed with a safety pin but that will not be the case soon. I have a hook and eye situation that I made and I'm going to stitch that on and then I'm going to start working on the embroidery along the hem and a little bit on the front opening. I go stargazing quite often so I'd like to use a lot of the constellations and star patterns that I see most often. This is probably going to take me approximately five million years so I'm gonna start it tonight, and I'm definitely not gonna finish it tonight. I'm gonna to be using a white Egyptian cotton embroidery thread, so I'm gonna go get embroidering some stars, and I'll show you the process tomorrow in the light of day. So for the smaller stars, I decided to just do some tiny little eight-pointed Xs. So stitching a tiny little X with two slanted stitches going through it. By the way, the reason this footage is in black and white is because the lighting was terrible, and this makes it look a little better. For the larger stars, I just did a larger X with two small stitches to tack down the center. Here's what the embroidery looks like up close. Then to finish off the whole cloak, I sewed on the large hook and eyes for the closure. That 
is the finished product of my dream cloak. Now, what would I change if I were to do this again? Honestly, I don't think I would change anything about this cloak. I really, really like it, and I'm definitely going to be wearing it on a lot of my stargazing expeditions. However, there are a few things that I might consider adding. Right here where the closure is, I was thinking I might embroider a little crescent moon right here on each side because I thought that might brighten it up a little bit more on the upper area of the cloak. Another thing I might add is a few more pockets because I do have quite a few scraps left. That way I could have a few more places to actually put things aside from just a place to keep my hands. So those are just a few possible additions and I do still really like the cloak as it is right now. This is actually one of the most expensive projects that I've ever made because if you know me, you probably know that I'm a huge cheapskate. Just the materials for this cost me about $55. That's about $50 just for the fabric and then another $5 for the white embroidery thread. Something to note, I am willing to do commissions to make your dream cloaks for you. So if you're interested in that, go to my Instagram, Miranda double underscore Milner, and DM me and we can talk about it. Quickly before I finish off the video, I'd like to mention that I have an Etsy shop, Gwen's Vintage Box, where I'm selling vintage and antique curated boxes themed after different colors, so go and check that out in the description box below. That would be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! With 100% natural fibers, pairing a dye bath for this, that, Whoa! I don't know what that was. Whoa, the exposure's weird. I look like a ghost.